how much money did I make to fight Diego Nightmare Sanchez in the UFC? That's what we're talking about today, guys. Let's get to it. Welcome back, everybody. It's Miles. Today, we're talking about UFC 171, where we had Johnny Hendricks versus Robbie Lawler. We're talking about that card. I fought Diego Nightmare Sanchez in Dallas, Texas. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Miles, and I've had 14 new fights in the UFC. I've had two seasons on The Ultimate Fighter, and I'm currently signed with Bellator. You can say I've been fighting mixed martial arts my whole life. And throughout this whole career that I've had so far, I've been taking all my money that I make from fighting and I've been buying real estate and investing it there. That's what we talk a lot about on this channel. We talk a lot about financial freedom, uh, assets, liabilities. It's my hope that with me revealing the numbers that I actually made from my personal fights in the UFC, that I can peel back some of the, the layers of what it's like behind the scenes business-wise being a UFC fighter. Now it's up to you guys to say whether that's a lot of money or whether that's too that's too little money. I deserve more, I deserve less. Whether you should smash that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up button. I just wanna give you a behind the scenes transparent look and that's what we're looking to do with this video. Now coming into this fight with Diego Sanchez, I was coming off a four fight win streak in the UFC. I'd recently submitted Chris Saunders in my UFC debut. I then knocked out Ramsey Nijim with one of the most devastating knockouts in UFC. If you haven't seen that fight, make sure to check it out, look it up, it was a great one. And then I also came off of two decision wins, one over Mike Michael Johnson, and then one over Mike Ricci. Both two great fighters. So it's needless to say, I was confident coming in this fight with Diego Sanchez. I was on a roll, I was on fire, and at the same time though, looking at Diego Sanchez, I was a little bit nervous. Diego recently just came off of a fight of the year for 2014 against Gilbert Melendez. These two guys were banging all three rounds. Diego got dropped, Gilbert got dropped. They were going back and forth. It was like a legit war. And that's why I won fight of the year in 2014. And this made me nervous because I was like, man, how am I gonna beat this guy? This guy is an animal. I've never fought anybody at this caliber. Uh, Diego's coming off of, you know, fighting out of the fight of the the, the year, um, you know, title contention against BJ Penn. He was just a big name in my in my head, a big big name. So it was a very nervous fight for me. One thing that I do remember though with this is that I remember thinking that it's like a tree. Over these years, everybody's been chopping at this tree with Diego chopping, chopping, chopping. And I remember thinking to myself, maybe I'm that, that one guy that chopping, chopping, that might be able to put him away. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to put him away, but I did defeat him. Won a unanimous decision, I had a great performance. Even though I was on a hot streak in the UFC, this was actually my first taste of being on pay-per-view, being on a main card, which is the best to, to be at in, when you fight. Being on a pay-per-view card, you're in front of millions of viewers, it's, a, it's a, a big card. I mean, obviously with the, the main event, Hendricks versus Lawler. Uh, I mean, millions and millions and millions of people tuning in. So this was a great opportunity for myself and something that I, I'd never have done before, getting on that main card. Before we actually get into the numbers, if anybody out there is interested in any personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, make sure to check the link in the description below. Let me know I can help you. We can go over anything from MMA, UFC related, fight related, personal training, diet, real estate investing, anything over finances, that's what I'm here to help for. So make sure to hit that link in the description. Now let's get into the exact numbers for this fight. For this fight, I had a lot of sponsors. I had a lot of great sponsors at the time. I made around $25,000 just in sponsorships alone for this fight. I had great, great people behind me like DZ, uh, you know, look them up. Great family-owned company, great people behind the scenes. I had Panini with me. I had Muscle Farm, which was one of the, the biggest sponsors years ago in the UFC. So needless to say, I, uh, I was doing very good with the sponsors. I had some heavy hitters on my shorts. If you're wondering about sponsors, what they are, what they're about, check out my, my video I did, how much money I made in my first UFC fight. I talk a little bit in detail about them. Uh, but just for now, sponsors were $25,000 for this fight. Next up is how much money I made from the actual UFC. Now with the UFC, you get paid to, to show and then you get your win pay. 
So basically, long story short, you get 50% of your money just to show up and fight, and then you get the other 50% when you actually, if you win. If you don't win, you don't get that money. For this fight with Diego, I won, so I actually got it. I made $12,000 to show, and then I made an additional $12,000 with my win over the Diego Sanchez. On top of that, what UFC will do, if you have a great performance, they'll send you what's known as a locker room bonus. Now this locker room bonus is around three to five to $10,000. It's one of those. And not everybody gets them. You don't know if you're gonna get them. It's basically like a check in the mail that, that comes in. And for this fight with Diego Sanchez, I was sent $5,000 after the fight for my locker room bonus. All in, my total income for this fight was $54,000. But wait, there's more. With this $54,000, just like any other business, there's a lot of expenses that come along with it. Let's start with my management. Now my management is 20% of my fight money and my sponsorship money only. They don't touch any of the bonus money or locker room bonuses. For this fight, I had a management fee of $9,800. Next up is my gym fee. This is to pay for training at the gym, for the coaches, the coaching staff, to pay for the lights at the gym, uh, showers, everything that comes around just my training. And this is a big, big one because my team, my coaches, those are what get me in shape and, and get me prepared for these big fights. And that's exactly what we did. For this fight, I was in Alliance MMA, training, locking myself up, getting after it, coming in great shape and ready to perform. Now my gym fee is 10% and it's only 10% of my show and my win money. No, no sponsorship money or anything like that. And my total gym fee for this fight was $2,400. We then have miscellaneous fees for this training camp for Diego Sanchez. Stuff like uh, massages, uh, blood work, medicals, eye exam, um, paying for training partners to come in and train with me. I believe for this fight, we brought in two training partners, Southpaws to mimic Diego Sanchez. And all in all, my miscellaneous fees for this fight were $3,000. Last but not least, we have our taxes. Just like any other business, being a UFC fighter, being a mixed martial arts fighter, you have to pay your taxes. We get our lump sums of money and we have to pay it out at the end of the year. For this fight, I actually had to pay $7,000 for taxes. So after paying my management, after paying my gym, uh, putting the money away for taxes, paying for massages and training partners, my total expenses for this fight came out to $22,200. Now make sure to drop a comment below. Let me know if those expenses you guys thought that was just, just how much it would be, if you thought it'd be a lot more, thought maybe it'd be a lot less. Uh, let me know what you think about the management fees and the gym fees. Is that is that right on par with what you guys are thinking? Let me know. So finally, to find out the exact amount of money I brought home and I got to keep in my pocket for this fight on a pay-per-view card in the UFC against Diego Sanchez, you gotta take my total income minus all my expenses and that comes out to $31,800 I took home at the end of the night in my pocket for a win over Diego Sanchez. A win on a pay-per-view card in front of millions of people. My fifth fight, my fifth win in a row in the UFC. I took home $31,000 in some change. Let me know what you guys think. Is that a lot? Is that a little? I'm interested to hear what you guys, your opinions are on it. As always, don't forget, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, drop a comment, let me know any videos or topics you guys are willing to, to want to hear. Now besides this $31,800, one of the best things about winning a fight, not only making the money, but in the UFC when you win a fight, you're guaranteed another fight. And I say guaranteed like loosely because obviously UFC can do whatever they want. They can cut you if they feel like it for a laundry list of reasons. But for me, in, in this moment, when I fought Diego Sanchez, I was super happy of my performance, the money I made, but most importantly, I was also, also excited because I knew I would have another opportunity to fight in the UFC. I would have another fight coming in, another opportunity to go out there, beat a great opponent, work towards that title, and ultimately make some more money. Now with this $31,800, it wasn't anything you could retire off of, but at the end of the day, I did the same thing I always do. I took that money, I saved it, I live you know, underneath, below my means, and I basically bought a uh, real estate. I bought a single family home after this fight, a couple of bedrooms, a cash flow, we'll be able to rent it out, and that's what I do. That's what we talk about a lot in this channel, hopefully educate you guys, inspire you guys one way or another, whether it's peeling back the curtains on uh, the fight game, or whether it's talking about getting your money right, keeping your money, making it work hard for you, building wealth, building riches, so you can go out there and have a great, great life for you and your family.
That's what we're talking about. So let me know, guys. Drop a, a comment below, any topics you guys want to hear. I'm here for you guys. And until next time.